Hi everybody, Liz here with Liz's Crafts and uh, today we're going to make an Easter um, little sign that you hang on your wall. So the first thing I want to do is uh, to cover my surface and this is just an old clock face. Um, it's some of that probably MDF board. I had an old clock that didn't work anymore, so if you have something like that, don't throw it away. You can always use it for crafting. So uh, that's what we're going to be using today, and I have this paper right here, the scrapbook paper. It's pretty thick. I got it from Michael's this, well, the week of, uh, the last week of February, and uh, it was buy one, get two free. So that was a pretty good deal, and I'm just using a sheet out of this one here, which is Plush Peonies. And I'm going to be using the method that I've been using uh, for the last few times of Mod Podging with my iron. So the first thing I did was trace out my circle on the paper, and then I'm just going to cut it out. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bigger or whatever because we're going to use our sanding block to um, take off the edges. I just, I like the way that it looks. And then we'll um, take our sanding block all over the piece of scrapbook paper and that'll just make it look worn. And I'm liking that look too. If you don't like it, of course you don't need to do that part. Okay, now that we have this cut out, I'm going to put my Mod Podge onto my surface. And I'm going to use a pretty good bit of Mod Podge. Now you need to be careful of the center because there is a hole there. You don't want to get Mod Podge all over your table. And you especially want to get around the edges really well because those tend to come up and not want to stick. So make sure you get your Mod Podge around the edges really well. And I like to iron my Mod Podge onto the surface and the paper with it wet. A lot of people do it dry. I have not had any luck doing that, so I do it when it's wet. So if if you're not having luck with it when it's wet, then dry it first and then iron it. Like I said, some people do it that way. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what. So I do it while it's wet. Okay, so I just want to make sure my edges I've gotten Mod Podge all around my edges here. Okay, and now I'm just going to put my paper on top of it and then I'm going to iron it down. So I just want to line it up. And when you first iron on the wet Mod Podge paper, it is going to move around. So. First off, you want your, this is just a regular iron, you want it off of steam and you want it on the highest setting, which on mine is linen. Now I'm just going to sit it here and then, uh, or set it here. And then I'm going to move it around. I'm lifting up and then moving it. That way it's not going to move my paper and put it in a position that I don't want it. Once it starts to adhere, then I can start moving my iron around. Now, of course, you, I don't think you have to do this when uh, you use dry Mod Podge. Like I said, I tried the dry Mod Podge and the iron and um, it just didn't work for me. Okay, now that I've gone over it and set the iron on it, it's not moving. So now I'm going to move the iron over top of it. And I don't put anything on top of it. However, you can and maybe you should. I see that I'm getting a little something 
off of my iron onto my paper. So I'm going to get it this little napkin here and I'm going to put it on top of it. And it's probably because I'm getting Mod Podge on my iron. Maybe what's on the side or something. So I'm just, I just put a, a napkin on top of my piece of my board with my piece of Mod Podge paper on top of it. I'm just moving it around. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, it has some wrinkles in it. We want to get those out. So I'm, I'm pressing from the middle out. So I'm taking my iron in the middle and then I'm pressing it out to the edges to get any wrinkles out. I like this method of doing Mod Podge because it is less wrinkly than if you just do it without the iron. And sometimes you have to go over it a couple of times. So it looks pretty good right now. However, as it starts to dry a little more, we might need to use the iron a little more. So I'm going to go around the edges, see how I have a lot of the Mod Podge. I probably should have taken that off first because that's probably what is getting on my iron and then uh, ultimately getting back onto my paper here. So let me get a wipe. Get this off my fingers. All right, now that we have that on there, I'm going to take my um, sanding block and I'm going to go around the edges. Now this just cleans up the edges so that if you have any paper that is hanging over, it'll get that off. And uh, it actually makes it look like the paper was bought on the surface. It just looks so good. So, and you want to do it at an angle. And then when we get finished with the edges, we're going to go over the top and it'll just make it look like it's worn. Now, like I said, I like that look. You might not like it. And if you don't, then of course you don't have to do that step. I'm just giving you inspiration for your piece. this step either but I like it I just think it makes it look like this paper was bought on the surface and my sanding blocks um, I the last time I bought them I got them at uh, tractor supply they were um, 10 in a package for $5 they also had them at um, Dollar Tree, but you buy them individually, and of course they're a dollar. So if you get them at Tractor Supply, they're um, a dollar cheaper. Is it Tractor Supply? No, not Tractor Supply. Um, oh, what is the name of that other place? Well, it's the other place where you get like tools and stuff at a cheaper price. I can't remember the name of it. 
Well, if you remember the name of it, put it in the comments. Or if you know the name of it. Harbor Freight. I'm sorry, yeah. Harbor Freight. You could probably get these at any hardware store, too. And I'm sure Walmart might probably has them also. Now when we get through sanding this, oh, we'll look to see if um, there are any if any more ironing needs to be done. Okay, I think we're finished with the edges. And now I want to go over the top of it. And I'm not just doing the edges on the top, I'm going to do the whole piece. Plus, that should get off any of that um, Mod Podge I ended up getting on the face of it. Or it'll make it look less noticeable. Let's put it that way. See how that's looking? It's putting these white spots there. Just making it look old. Old and worn. And if you haven't already liked and followed Liz's uh, crafts on Facebook, please do so. And uh, make sure you set your notifications so that you'll be notified when I put new videos out there. I'm not able to go live due to my internet service, so um, I have to take, I have to video my crafts and then um, put them out there for you. And I also put them on uh, YouTube. And my YouTube channel is Liz Yonke, L-I-Z-Y-O-N-K-E-Y. So if you'd like to subscribe to that and see my videos, please feel free to do so. And you can do this either on Facebook or YouTube. I would appreciate it, especially if you like what you see. And I also have Liz's um, Craft Friends. That's a group on Facebook. It is a closed group. However, if you answer two questions, and uh, depending on the way you answer the questions, if you say yes, you'll be approved to be a member of the group. And in that group, you can just share pictures of uh, crafts that you have done. And I would love to see any crafts that you have done from any of my craft videos. And, you know, just see your take on it. Um, would be great. Okay, so we have this right here. And uh, I don't, I don't feel any bubbles. I don't see any uh, bubbles or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead. Let me <coughs> put my Mod Podge up. Turn my iron off and get it out of the way. Okay, and then what we're going to use, let's see how I like this, I think I like it like this. Okay, so what we're going to use is this sign right here, not this exact sign, but a sign like this. So I got this from the Dollar Tree, we're going to use the truck, so I just... I just peeled it off of this stick right here. So, we have our truck here, and I'm just going to leave it as is. It's pretty cute. 
However, I think I will put some blocks under it to raise it up. So let me get some blocks here. I'm always forgetting something. So I'll just grab some blocks and uh, I'm going to position them probably in three places under the truck just like that to raise it up. Now, um, the stencil I want to use is from this packet here that's called Christian Love Quads. And it's all about love. So it says, love is patient, love is kind. This is the one we're going to use today. Love always hopes, always perseveres. Love always protects, always trusts. Love never fails. And that's in 1 Corinthians 13. So I will put the link to this stencil and to the top face in uh, the description of this video. The chalk paste we're going to be using is uh, Sugar Plum, and that's this bright pink. I thought it went very well with the truck here. So I want to go ahead and put my stencil on first before I put the truck on. So I just want to uh, make sure all the dust is off of my surface. And the products are from um, Liz Yonke dot magnoliadesignco.com and I will also put that in the description and then you can look at any of the products that are there. So let's take a look at this. Perfect. Okay, so I have my stencil positioned on my surface here and I'm going to take my squeegee which was uh, a little bit bigger than this and I just cut it. So it's in more manageable pieces. And uh, I'm just going to get some chalk paste on my squeegee. And then I'm just going to put it right there on my, on my uh, stencil. And putting it through the um, screen portion of my stencil. I'm just pushing the product through the screen onto the surface. Now, um, my chalk paste really isn't the consistency that uh, when I first got it, it was. I had let it dry up a bit. Well, quite a bit, actually. So I just revitalized it with um, a spray bottle of distilled water and just kept stirring it and stirring it and stirring it. It's still not that consistency, but it works. So even if you think your chalk paste is all dried up and is not going to work, it will as long as you rehydrate it with distilled water. Okay, so I'm just going to lift this. Okay, the L here didn't seem to go through too well. Let's see. I'm going to get a little bit of paste on there. Yep, there it is. Okay. Awesome. And if you think you can't use these stencils, let me tell you, you are mistaken. Because uh, I didn't think I could do it either. But if you want to try it out and see if this is something you like to do and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I suggest that... Um, you get one of uh, the DIY kits on Magnolia. And that way uh, it has everything you need to make a project. It has the surface, it has the stencil, it has the squeegee, it has the chalk paste. And uh, it has everything you need to make a completed craft. And that way if you get that, then you can decide if, you, if it's for you or not. So I want to, this, this is beautiful, look at that. I know you can't see it too, too well, but I am, I don't want to mess this up. So I'm going to use my heat gun on it to dry it a bit. Now the chalk paste dries pretty quickly.
Okay, I think that's pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and continue. So what I want to do is put some blocks on the back of my truck so that it would be lifted up off of my project. Now I want to use two different types of glue. I'm going to use E6000. That'll keep it adhered no matter what. It, uh, it takes it a while to dry, so I'm also going to use my glue gun, heat hot glue gun, and it will dry immediately. If you just use your glue gun, I want to tell you that if you don't keep this inside your house where the temperature is even and you put it outside or uh, store it somewhere that gets cold or hot, it could very well fall apart. If you're just using your hot glue and it's cold, it gets brittle and your piece can fall apart. If it's too hot, your glue melts and your piece can fall apart. So make sure you use both E6000 and hot glue. So you want to put your E6000 on first because it takes a while to dry and your, um, your hot glue dries right away. So I just put a blob of E6000 in the center and then I um, put the hot glue on either end. And I'm going to use three blocks, one on each end and then one in the center. Got some chalk paste on my finger. And I think three blocks is um, all we need here. And then to adhere it to the board, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I just have this popsicle stick and I'm putting the E6000 again in the center of my block and then I'll put the hot glue on either side. Okay, I just want to decide where I want to put this on my piece here. Now it will hang over and that's okay. I'm okay with that. And then once I get it on there, I'm just going to hold it down for a few seconds. Okay, now since this is an Easter project and uh, Easter really doesn't have a lot to do with bunnies and eggs. It has to do with um, Christ dying on the cross for us so that we could live. Uh, I'm going to put a cross also on this Easter piece. So I have these little laser cut uh, crosses and I have one picked out right here that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to um, put that over here, kind of angled on the side. So I do want to use some E6000 and some hot glue. You don't need a lot because it's a small, small area, but I do want enough that it will stick. So again, I'm going to angle it on there and just lay it down. And then I want to cover up this hole in the truck there where it had a hanger right here. So I'm going to put one of these little flowers on there, one of these little roses. I got this at Hobby Lobby way back when, two for a dollar. And, um, I've just had them laying around, so I'm going to use what I have, and I'm just going to use some hot glue. I'm going to put it over top of the hole, put my little stem down in the hole, and then hold my flower on there for a few seconds. Alrighty. Okay. 
So now we just need to make a hanger. And what I'm going to do for that is I have um, this jute here. Oh no, I just lost the bead. There it is. I have this jute that I had gotten from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago after Christmas. And I just want to put a little bit of hot glue on the end. Careful not to burn my fingers. I'm going to take it and just roll it. Roll it in between my fingers and then it makes a little point and then I'll be able to put my um, beads on my jute hanger. So you want to do an even amount of beads so that uh, you have, I'm doing 12 beads. So I have six beads on this side, six beads on this side, and actually the hanger itself, the jute, is what gets put on the nail. So again, do an even amount of beads. And these beads I got off of a uh, just a bead garland, just with these beads on it, I got at Walmart at Christmas time. And they were actually cheaper to buy them that way than if I just bought a container of these beads. So that's what I did. And I'm almost out of them. Now what I want to do is just put a knot close to the end and then I want to do another knot on top of that knot. And then I want to trim the end. Get that glue off of there. Okay. Now I want to turn this over and I want to decide where I want my hanger. Probably here and here. So I think I'm just going to mark it a little bit because I'm always messing up where I want my hangers. So I think right here and right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold that right there and I'm going to take my um, stapler and that way then the knot is over top of it. Well, the knot won't slide through the staple, but I'm also going to put a strip of glue in front of and behind the staple. And let's just hold this here for a couple seconds before we move on. Don't need my pencil anymore. Okay. Now again, I'm going to put two knots, one on top of each other. For the other end of the hanger. Put it right there where I want it. And I'm going to have to turn it around, hold it, and then, because the bead was in the way. There we go. So now, again, I'm going to trim the end up. I'm going to put hot glue. In front of and behind the staple. Make sure that stays there. And then I'll show you what we have. Just a couple more seconds here. And this is just a quick little project that you can do with um, Dollar Tree items. So two, four, six, and so you would hang it here. So our Easter projects, the track says Happy Easter, and uh, the stencil says love is patient, love is kind, and we got our cross here. So isn't that cute? 
So I'll hang this up and I'll take a picture of it. I'll put it on Liz's Crafts and Liz's Craft Friends. And if this is something that uh, you end up doing, I would love to see your finished project on Liz's Craft Friends. And uh, like I said, just um, get on there, answer those two questions, and I'll give you permission to be a member of that group. And um, if you want any of these products, the stencils or the um, chalk paste or whatever, please order from my links. Uh, I will put the link the direct link to the stencil and to the chalk paste in the description along with um, my shop link which is lizyonke.magnoliadesignco.com I do get a little percentage you do not pay any more money than you normally would so if you also want to be a creator with that company you can order their uh, creator box it comes with um, several different supplies and um, the only thing you have to do is pay ten dollars and ninety nine cents a month for your website you however for each order after your creator box get thirty five percent off everything you order now the DIY kits are not available to creators they're only available to regular customers so if you want a DIY box or a project make sure you get that before you sign up to be a creator if that's what you want to do. Okay, well that's all I have for you today. I'll be back in another video with another project, but until then, keep crafting my friends. Bye.